Uh, the island of Kauai, the northernmost uh, of the islands uh, uh, that we discussed because Ni Hao was pretty much reserved for Hawaiians. But Kauai uh, had a, a harbor and uh, plains and so on and plantation, early plantations, so that you find on Kauai towns which are still thought of as Portuguese. Kalaheo uh, is, is one of them. Koloa would have many Portuguese because of the plantation. So the, the Kauai Portuguese, I think, in general, uh, were later arrivals than those uh, early ones on Oahu and Maui. That was Kauai was, became Portuguese settlement favorite spot uh, from 1878 on. As far as I know, there was no Protestant uh, incursion there. Uh, that was uh, somehow the uh, movement went south rather than north. My name is Sean Kahali'i Tekshera. I was born and raised in Kapa'a on the island of Kauai. Well, my, my father is pure Portuguese, so I am proud to be part Portuguese. I am half Portuguese, and my mother is uh, part Hawaiian, part ca uh, Caucasian. She's roughly about 60% uh, Hawaiian, and the other 40% is a mixture of English, Irish, uh, Norwegian, Swedish. So I am uh, about 30% Hawaiian, uh, half Portuguese, and about 20% English, Irish, that Caucasian mix. Yes. So I'm a, we call it a mixed plate, mixed plate, yeah. Come <laughs> plate. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you were raised here in uh, Raised, raised uh, here. I am 17 years old, so I was raised uh, in Kapa for, for 17 years. Yes. Well, um, I, I knew that uh, uh, my grandfather was, was born in Portugal and that, that he came on a ship and that they went uh, around South America and then that was a very, very hard journey. And uh, I, I believe uh, one of our family members passed away on that ship, if, if I'm not, uh, if I could be wrong, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, but one of our family members passed away because it was a very hard journey. I think it was over six months that they were on this ship. No, this was, how was it? More like three, I think. Three months. Or something like that. So around uh, three months they're on the ship that went around South America and they had to live on that ship. And uh, you know, my grandfather arrived in Puhi, and then uh, he worked. I learned that he was uh, a driver for one of the uh, plantation owners. And um, I knew that uh, my, my grandpa was kind of a character. Every time he would go to the store or any place he would go, if he didn't know somebody's name, he'd just call him Sammy Boy. Hey, Sammy Boy. You know, so any, we could be at the airport, and there'd be somebody grabbing my bag. Hey, Sammy Boy, come here. So, and my grandpa, uh, he called my dad a uh, Nagana Boy. Nagana is a uh, is sleeping sickness. So my dad would always wake up late, and so you know he'd call my dad Nagana boy. <laughs> and then my grandpa had a saying for palasho. He created this word palasho. I'm not sure what it means, but he'd call me palasho boy, mm -hmm. anything of that sort. Yes. You can mention that they live right next to us. Sure. That's right. My 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 grandmother and my grandfather they lived uh, right up uh, right next to us over here. So growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather. I know that uh, he loves soccer. So when I started to play soccer, he would always uh, come to my uh, soccer games. And I remember growing up and my my grandpa was very, very, he was always into his garden, always, either he was in his garden playing cards or uh, killing chickens. I don't know why, I remember one time, I, had, I, always, I always have, I've had a few uh, bloody encounters with him. And what I mean by that is one time I was in my garden, I mean his garden, and I was maybe about four or so, and he was uh, gardening, planting something, and then he cut himself, and then he showed me this big cut, big oh, blood all over his arm, and I was just... I was completely, I was like, oh, what is that, Grandpa? You know, and he was proud to say, look at this, how's this, you know? Another time, he was uh, killing a chicken, and he was, he was cutting the, the chicken's head. And I was, I was just watching him, and he placed the chicken's head on a, on a two, by, two by four, and he cut the head, and the blood went on my face, you know? Pretty crazy, and he, he, he likes messy things. I mean, not messy things, but he's always made a mess. When he's killed the chickens, he's plucked them, he's put them, uh, he always, uh, when he did that, he'll place them in the trash. and. Uh, uh, he lived, my auntie sis, my dad's uh, older sister, lived with uh, my grandpa and my grandma. And she would always go to work, and my grandpa would always uh, come back here, and he would always kill the chickens. And he would like to uh, prepare them. You know, he would start early in the morning, and he would prepare them. 
speaking about the roosters. He's speaking about the roosters right there. <laughs> but you know, he would prepare them and he would place them in containers, the chicken. And he would think for some reason that would be dinner. And my auntie would come home and she would see this container of chicken, nice and cut up, in the fridge. And you know, she, she was all confused. She, not, she, she wasn't sure what that was. So she would go and grab the trash. She would just dump the trash, dump it outside. And then in the trash was feathers, chicken's head, blood, all kind of stuff. So she put two and two together. And she would go back to her and yell at my grandpa and say, no, I don't want to eat this wild chicken from the, you don't know what is in this chicken. And you know, this is wild chicken. We eat chicken from the store nowadays. We don't eat wild chicken, you know. And so I guess my grandpa coming from Portugal and you know, being passed down with the old ways, he had no problem with uh, mm -hmm. killing a chicken and preparing it and having it for uh, dinner, you know. Now on, on my mother's side, my grandmother, uh, who was uh, three quarters Hawaiian, she uh, loved to play the piano. And, and that was her main thing she um, did. Uh, she played for weddings and funerals, those, those type of uh, activities or events or celebrations. And she used to play in any key for people who understand music. You know, certain songs you play in certain keys. And there's this one story where she was playing uh, at this wedding. And my uh, grandmother had 11 children. So my mother was the youngest, no, not 11, nine children. My mother was the youngest of nine children. And so there was this story where she was playing at this wedding and she would bring all her nine children with her. They're still small yet. Yeah. And she was playing and they'd all be crying, making a loud noise. So she would listen to them crying and she'd figure out what key, try to find out the key that was close to their pitch of crying. So when she played the song in that key, they kind of, you know, got a little quiet. They kind of quieted down because it kind of, it's the same sync, same sound, same, you know, tone. You know, so that's, she used to listen to them cry and then match that with the song she was playing, put it in the same key. And uh, my grandfather, his roots, uh, uh, his last name was Reeves, uh, and he came from uh, Tennessee. Uh, my, my, my grandfather's father came from Tennessee. And so my grandfather is um, half Hawaiian and uh, half Caucasian, that blood, uh, from Tennessee. And uh, he died at, at an early age of um, heart disease. So I, have, I, didn't, I did not have the pleasure of meeting my father or mother on my mother's side, but I did have the pleasure of meeting my grandmother and my uh, grandfather my father's side. My grandmother was very, she was a very loving person, very kind, very gentle, she was very sweet. She, you know, she didn't, she, didn't have, she didn't, did not have a mean streak in her. She wasn't always, she didn't look down on people or want to cause any harm, nothing of that. I remember her, she'd always sit down very peacefully. She liked to clap a lot. For some reason, she liked to clap. I don't know why, but she loved, she'd just sit down by herself, nobody would be around, and she'd just start clapping like that. And I don't know why, I don't know if she's, maybe it's an old Portuguese, you know, tune that she's listening to or what, but she always loved to clap, very musical. And she loved to go for walks and swimming. She loved to swimming. She was you know, very active and that's what kept her in good shape. And she lived, as well as my grandpa lived for a long time. My grandpa, I believe, died at the age of uh, 94. And my grandmother around uh, 96. So they lived for a, a very long time, you know, very uh, healthy style of living. And, and she, you know, she lived like a grand aunt or older than one the years old or something like that? My, yeah, my, my, um, uh, my, my grand, my, grand, my grandpa's uh, sister, Auntie Virginia, she just turned 100. My grandmother's brother, Uncle Joe, he just passed away a couple, about a year ago or so. He was, I believe, 102. 103. 103 years old. He was 103 years old. So longevity. But my Hawaiian side, not as lucky. Not as lucky. I don't know. I guess there's something about the Portuguese. They have it in them to live long lives. It's a soup. soup it's, a soup. It's, it's the Vinga Doyish father, I think. <laughs> Well, um, I attended Kamehameha Schools. It's a school uh, that the school I attended was on Oahu. It's a boarding school as well as school for uh, day students. And to attend the school, you have to have part Hawaiian blood. You have to be of part Hawaiian uh, ancestry. And the school is founded by uh, Princess Pohi Bishop. And she founded the school in a time when the Hawaiian population was going through a rapid decrease. And she wanted to uh, do something to uh, help the Hawaiian people uh, be integrated into Western society so that they could you know, have a successful style of living in the Western uh, civilization, the Western style of living. Um, and so she founded this school to help uh, uh, teach Hawaiians about Western ways of living, but also keep the uh, Hawaiian language and Hawaiian way of thinking and, and Hawaiian lifestyle. So she wanted to be able to make sure Hawaiians were proud of who they were, but help them to make a transition from the old world into the Western world, which was brought over by uh, the foreigners. So she founded this school around 1887 is believed to be the richest school uh, in, in, the, in the United States. It has a $6 billion uh, state. So I dormed there, I was in Kamehameha dorm. I dormed with uh, 30 other boys in my dorm. I dormed there for uh, four years. 
it was it was a, a great experience and I realized that you know you see all other cultures when you go there because you know I met people from all other islands and there's a lot of people that I mean there's a lot of Portuguese that I met that have a lot of you know part Hawaiian blood and a lot of them are just like me they have Portuguese last names and they're part Portuguese but they're also part Hawaiian so over there there was a lot of Sousas, uh, Bentos, uh, I knew another Teixeira, um, uh, Silva so many Portuguese names and, and coming from Kauai um, I knew you know some Portuguese names so when I saw that the last name was Silva or Bento Portuguese I'll go up to them and say hey are, are you guys part Portuguese and you know they yes you know so it has something something that we had in common we're Hawaiian but we're also uh, Portuguese and that was great to know that and uh, the school was also is very rich in their music department and I played piano for four years on Kauai I learned no, about six years of classical music then I went to Kamehameha and I stopped playing altogether. I just didn't have time because I had to get used to living in a dorm, being away from my father, all the different types of classes, getting used to the lifestyle there. And I stopped playing for two years. Then I joined the choir up there, the concert glee club. And um, I, my instructors played beautiful Hawaiian music and we sang Hawaiian music, you know. And they inspired me to take up Hawaiian music and the Hawaiian piano, Hawaiian style of playing. And that's, the, and that's what I've done for the past two years, my junior and senior year. I took up um, Hawaiian music and I listened to them, they asked them questions, they taught me and so now I play Hawaiian music and I wrote a song called Ilima o Kalani which means uh, Ilima is the Ilima, of course it's a flower and it's also the flower of Oahu and Kalani means heavenly, very heavenly so Ilima o Kalani means Ilima of the heavens and I picked the Ilima flower to write about and to play about because my mother was from the island of Oahu where she was born and raised and their flower is Ilima so I incorporated that into my song and a lot of the song I talk about is about my mother and I, the song, the lyrics talk about the flower, the ilima flower, its beauty so, but the kauna, kauna in Hawaiian is hidden meaning, double meaning so if people um, knew who I was, knew my history, knew who my mother were uh, knew who my mother was and they listened to the song then they would be, on, you know, they'd be able to combine the two and realize that the ilima flower is actually talking about uh, my mother but I was very proud to come from Kamehameha schools. Very happy I experienced something different. Being living in the dorm, it's, it's not easy. My freshman year was very hard trying to be away from you know, my dad. But uh, I managed, you know, took time to get used to, and uh, I had a lot of good teachers, uh, my dorm advisors, very supportive, good environment, very good environment uh, over there. And I gained a lot. I learned about my Hawaiian culture and who I was. But um, I had the best of both worlds because my mother passed away when I was six. So I lost some of the touch of my Hawaiian side. So going to Kamehameha helped to strengthen my Hawaiian side. But my father's always been there for me, and he has always strengthened my Portuguese side. And so I have the best of both worlds. And that's what I'm most fortunate for. I'm very appreciative that I have the best of both worlds. Well, um, I'll be attending a Santa Clara University. Um, and I plan right now, I'll be attending the Liberal Arts College. But I'm thinking of double majoring. One in music. I love music but either one law or education, one of those two. But I still have to, you know, see my options. I'm still not sure completely yet what I want to uh, major in. But I know I definitely want to do something because money, you, need, you need to make money to survive in our world today. But music, I always want music on the side because music, uh, it, it's like a fruit for me. It, it, mm -hmm. it makes me very happy. And having a part of my life, you know, it's very important to me. It, it lifts up my soul and it makes me uh, who I am today. Mm -hmm. And so I always want music to be a part of me. It also connects, we, uh, connects me with my mother and my grandmother because they were in, very involved in music. So it's a nice connection. But um, I plan to um, live up on the mainland for a little while. But of course, I want to come back home. Live, I cannot beat you know, Kauai. And you know, um, I would like to some way give back to the Hawaiian community uh, because of attending Kamehameha schools. They've done so much to me. I want to give back to the Hawaiian community. But one thing that I'm very interested in doing and very soon is I'd like to visit Portugal and see my Portugal roots over there because being from Hawaii, I have seen my Hawaiian roots, but I haven't seen the mother country yet in Portugal. So I'd like to go to Portugal and if I can see some of my cousins and I would love to stay there for a little while and uh, attend some soccer games and just be involved over there. And I've always had a vision of how wonderful it would be if I became a professional soccer player and to play for Portugal instead of the US, <laughs> but to play for Portugal, you know, and, and you know, I'm very proud to be an American and you know, be part of the US, but a lot of my heart lies in Portugal, and I feel so much pride uh, when I see Portugal play soccer, or when I hear anything about Portugal, because oh, I know I'm, I'm part Portuguese, and uh, my mother, and uh, my mother, <laughs> my father, being a pure Portuguese, 
and um, I just I feel a very you know sense of pride. And when I watch Portugal on TV and I see Portugal, I feel a connection because I feel that's part of my homeland, mm -hmm. you know. And my grandfather came away from his home, and my my grandmother came away from their home to live here, you know. And they moved to a foreign place, and they moved away from their home. So one day I like to reconnect part of my soul with Portugal because those those are where uh, many of my roots are from. So my goal one day is to go to Portugal and you know visit and see you know and, and discover it but also to go to Rome and visit the Vatican because uh, being part Portuguese um, I was very grown up I was grown up uh, I was raised being a Catholic a very good Catholic because my whole family is Catholic and even my mother's side uh, was was Catholic so I'm a very strong Catholic and I would like to experience you know the Vatican and that part of the road and even Fatima in Portugal because I've read many books on Fatima I'm very interested and those sorts of types of things. So, visit Fatima would be awesome to me. Yes. Well, one of my mother's sisters, I'm her older sister, I call her my Auntie Rose Henry. She graduated from a Sacred Hearts a High School um, on Oahu, and she became a nun, and she moved to India, and she helped uh, the, the sick and the poor in India for many years, I, think, I believe over, over eight years now, and possibly over 10 years, and she's lived much of her life over there, and she's devoted. So, so she's, you know, she's part of the Sisters of Charity? She's uh, Sacred Hearts. Oh, Sacred Hearts, okay. Sacred Hearts. And so, you know, she's devoted much of her life to India, I mean, and to the people of India. And when my mother was dying of breast cancer, my Auntie Rose Henry went to see Mother Teresa to ask uh, Mother Teresa to uh, pray for my mother. And Mother Teresa wrote a small note to my mother saying she was praying for her and God, giving God's blessing upon her. And my Auntie Rose Henry, when she came to visit us, she gave that note to my mother. And we still have that note today. And I, I love the note because it's, it's very it's special to me to see something written from Mother Teresa, a saint like that. She was just a wonderful woman. And to be praying for my mother like that. And, and I'm happy to have an auntie who lives in India and who's helping. So one day I would like to go and uh, visit India and visit her. Yeah. So we need to go.